the Messiah. What does John conclude by his gospel? I write all these things that you may know that Jesus is the Messiah. He doesn't say, you know, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? In John chapter 21. Yeah. He, so he, I write all these things that you should know that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, the, uh, which is what we believe as well. He was a Savior who came to his Jewish community to bring them worshiping God and God alone. So in Abraham 858, all he's making citation is that I am the foretold Messiah. Before Abraham was there, I well, he was not there physically. We all know Christ didn't exist physically at that time. Are you following what I'm saying to you? So it also, you know the Greek, in that it says, um, um, ego a me, he says. He doesn't say ego a me, ho on, from the, old, from the New Testament, which um, is cited in the Septuagint version. The whole, ver the whole verse of that, the I am, is ego a me, ho on. But Christ says ego a me, and out of interest, in, in John chapter 9, the blind man also refers to himself as I am, meaning I am the one. I am the one who was mentioned, the one who Jesus and there's no, there's no mention of that as being, are you following what I'm saying to you? Ego Amy is simply a, a self-identifier as to who you are. So Christ identified himself as being the Messiah. We know this is, re this is replete, I've given you the references. John chapter 2, John chapter 4, John chapter 8, John chapter 10. What happens in John chapter 10? The Jews corner him and say to him, if you are indeed the Messiah, tell us plainly. Christ says, I've already told you so, yet you are not of my sheep. He already told them he's the Messiah. The most powerful verse, however, John 17, 3. What does Christ say? For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God, and whom you have sent, the messenger Jesus Christ. Sounds very much like the Islamic narrative. What we say is the following. In the Quran, it says you will find guidance and light therein. The key word there is therein, meaning to say there is much which you will find which is guidance and light, but it's not in totality, it's not guidance and light because in totality it's got discrepancies, it's been changed, there's a changing which has taken place. The Bible testifies that to itself. 1 Galatians chapter 5, Paul says, For how can there be um, um, another gospel of Christ when there is only one gospel? So that was very clear there were other Gospels in circulation. Or if you look at Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8, what does it say? For how can we be wise and have the law of God when the lying pen of the scribes has changed the Torah? Self-admitting. Are you following what I'm saying to you? The Quran states that they changed their words from their correct places. This happened in that time as well. So the Quran claims to be the final revelation of God Almighty to mankind. The verbatim, pristine, unadulterated book for all of mankind. Worship God and God alone. Don't give partners to God. Don't make association with God. What does, what does Christ say in Mark 10, 12, in Mark 12, 28? Where the scribe runs up to him and says to him, Teacher, what is the greatest of all commandments? What does Christ say? Hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. He didn't say, I am that God as well with him. Are you following what I'm saying to you? So the Islamic narrative, my friend, is that God is one, indistinguishable. Neither is he man, nor woman, nor un unlike his creation. 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 27. For how can the heavens and the earth contain God, much less the temple? God is not within the universe, it's beyond the universe. It's not God's majesty that is like the universe. A man, a limited man. Are you following what I'm saying? So Christ was a messenger of God. Mark chapter 6 verse 4. Matthew chapter 21 verse 11. He mentions expressly that he's a messenger of God. He doesn't go around the streets of Jerusalem and Galilee and Bethlehem saying that he's God. Rather, one who represents God. A messenger sent by Almighty God, a prophet. I've given you references there. Mark 6 4. Matthew 21 11. What do you think? I hear it. Yeah. I, hear, no, I, mean, I don't mean I hear it as in like yeah. I agree. But you rec I you, you give a recognition of it. I, I recognize that there's textual variances 
in a sense that obviously cross translations and all that stuff years because the Bible's written in not just one language as well. Obviously Moses wrote the first five first five books. The, pe the Pentateuch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the New Testament was written in Greek, the Old Testament, Testament was written in Hebrew. And there was some in Aramaic. Yeah, yeah but they're, Aramaic. they're extant now, they don't exist. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But you mentioned in verses. Pardon? You mentioned in verses only, only makes me think that you, you essentially. You do uh, essentially leave the Bible as a reliable source because if that was the case, if it wasn't, if, if it wasn't like yeah, it was completely unreliable to pull out of here, you would essentially. Take we don't say that's the whole. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. In the but it doesn't say it's totally unreliable. What did I say? The Quran says that you will find guidance and light therein. Therein means within the text you will find truth, but it doesn't mean it's all all correct. There are changes and discrepancies. And I'll give you an example. Jeremiah 8.8. 8. Look at the words carefully. For how can we be wise and have the law of the Torah when the lying pen of the scribes has changed the law of the God? They're admitting this is what they got up to. Are you following what I'm saying to you, my friend? So you find, you find semblances of truth within the New Testament, yes. But it's also because... For example, the New Testament, you're aware it wasn't written by singular authors, multiplicity of different authors. John's Gospel, according to conservative estimates, there were at least three different authorships. Different authors giving their own profound statements. So for example, when Jesus says in John 17, 3, which Muslims love to use, when Christ said, for this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God. Well, Christians would counter, oh, but what about in John 10, 30? where he says the Father and I are one. What is going on over here? But even when he says the Father and I are one, he just simply means one in purpose. But these self-elevatory titles you see in John's Gospel, is people are giving the different slants, three authors. One is speaking the truth, John, John 17, 3, John 14, 28, the Father is greater than I, for example. Mix that with John 10, 30, or John 14, 19, 14 9, he that has seen me has seen the Father. These were people putting their thoughts onto the lips of Jesus as if he said them. Are you following what I'm saying to you? These were additions within the text and people are imposing. But even then, it's, they're not saying that he's God, but rather look at his express words himself. Let's, let's do a little a, a, a role, a role play here, whereby he himself clearly states that God is the only true God. He is the messenger sent by God. In John 10, 30, when the Father and I are one, Meaning what? One in purpose, not one in essence. I'll tell you a little story very quickly. You know the Bible well. Mark, Matthew, my favorite verse, Matthew chapter 9, verse 3. Jesus forgives the sins of a paralytic man. You know the story? Jesus forgives the sins of a paralytic man. The Jews are watching. They say upon to themselves, Jesus must think he is God. Jesus reads their mind and says, why do you think such evil things? Meaning you thinking that I am God is an evil thought. Matthew chapter 9 verse 3. You finding what I'm saying to you? And when he does the miracle afterwards, towards the end of that verse, that event, they say they give thanks to God. So that the people watching on what Christ did, they praise God for giving authority to man to perform these acts. So even those people are observing that it's God who's doing the act through Jesus. Acts 2.22 Hear thou, O Israel, Jesus Christ, a man accredited by God, through whom God did one, he wonders, works and signs, that God did through him. Let me ask you a quick, quick, quick question. Who parted the sea? Moses or was it God? But by exact, So this is the exact same eulogy of Christ as well. God endowed him with miracles and signs for the reluctant believing Jewish people. So when they saw those signs, they would come to the true message of his, which was to worship God and God alone. Make sense? If you go to Numbers 23, 19, 19. God is actually speaking, describing himself here when he says, I am God, I am not a man that I might lie. Neither am I the son of man that I might repent. 
So if God is telling me this, this, why should we say that God is a man? If you read it, even if you read it in context, obviously for us we cannot fathom God. So God has to communicate with us to tell us now who he is. In the Bible, he's telling us explicitly who he is. You cannot see me. You cannot see me in this. Hosea, Hosea some, I think. 11.9. 11.9. That's even more explicit. More explicit. I am not a man. Is Jesus a man? Yes. God says, I alone is immortal. When you're immortal, there's two things that apply to someone that's immortal. Crucifixion and resurrection that only applies to someone that's mortal, like us. Did it apply to the second person of the Trinity? Yes, it did. So that negates that he's... It's, Very just, good. it's just simple. These are the questions, questions I had over 50 years ago. Yeah, and he's 69, 69, 10. Just by reading the past alone, there is God, but Jesus is not God, he's a man, but I didn't know where to place him, but I know he was a righteous man. Now, if you go to Acts, Paul, Paul himself didn't see Jesus as God, because he said that of every, at the head of every woman is man. The head of man is Christ, and the head of Christ, he never used the word father, he said God. The head of woman is man. The head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. So what we as Muslims are calling you, which is obligated to us to convey the message, is to save you from the hellfire. Now you can say, oh, you don't believe, you're an atheist. But that's, your, that's, that's your choice. But if you're a Christian, you believe in the hellfire. And just like if you have a child, and your child is going to touch something hot. You're not only going to tell a child no, but what you should have done before, what you should have done before, before you pull the child, what should you have done to the child before you touch the fire? Huh? Give them fire information. So that's what we're doing. And what the brother is doing, because I learn a lot from the brother. No, no, we can learn from each other. Each other. Yeah. I can learn more from you. No, no, you can show giving you his opinion. Everything that he said is either bringing you a chapter and verse from the Quran or a chapter and verse from the Bible. What you should do is okay, but this is what Islam teaches you. He brings up a verse, you cross reference, you check it. And if you see, if you read it and it makes sense, you have two options. You can accept or reject. Let me ask you something. Does it make sense to you? Think carefully here. That God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the irresistible, the incomparable, he can be a man. A, 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 he could be anything, but there are some I things. Think, I think you're, you're um, pigeonholing me. <laughs> that doesn't mean at the same time. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's like, yeah. You said God I can think, do it. Yeah, I think what I was going to say is like, what Liberty. you're saying is like, you're saying man can't be God, yes, but God can be man. God can be Despite the fact to. in Numbers 23 19, as the brother said, and in Hosea 11 9, it says God is not a man. There's a difference between what God is and what God does. Exactly. Can God cease to exist? Can God die? No, it's not probably because God's already said exactly. that so he's immortal. Yes. So when he said he's immortal, he's affirmed something and he negates. If he's everlasting, then he can never cease to exist. So you're saying God can do everything, but we know God cannot cease to exist. And if you're saying God can do anything, are you saying God can become a monkey? Because you have to say yes. That's not in it. That doesn't fit his majesty. But look, clearly those verses show that what God is not. So if God is not, it's paradoxical then to say that that is God something. God can be as such. So if, if like he said in um, Hosea 11, 9 or in number 23, 19, God is not a man. So then God cannot then, then be, be a man. It doesn't make definitively sense. Help me, because you're more versed no, in the no, Bible. It's fine. There is in the Bible, like in the Quran, where the Bible says that God is not of his creation. There is nothing like him. That's in Isaiah chapter 44. So if God now, as I said, God is describing himself. I'm not of this. This is creation. Anything that comes into existence has a beginning. God doesn't have a beginning. 
God doesn't have let, a He has yeah. no beginning. So he has no end. He's eternal. He's eternal. So, if God is saying this about himself, who are you to subscribe something to him that is not, with our limited knowledge? I mean, what's, what's you stopping being a Hindu, for example? Not, I'm having a God. Hindus believe in the same thing, a man being God. That's their, their religion is littered, littered with this belief. Yeah, but this, yeah, but what I'm saying, the, the, the analogy is the same, you see. That a man is God in their belief as well. Statues, idolatry, all that. So what we're saying to you, my friend, is to think deeply about this. Particularly when you look at those verses. Look, Christ is saying very clearly in John 17, 3, or in Mark 12, 28. For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God. So naturally, by proxy, that will, that will um, negate the fact that he can possibly be God. If I was to say, you're the only Christian here, by definition, this negates us free here. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Do you yeah, need to... Why do you choose to capitalize on the, the, the verses that imply obviously that, that imply that he is a very good question? So I tell you why? Because it comes from God or Jesus. We don't go to second or third person. So I think he asked something else. What was the question specifically? Why do we go to specific verses that suit us really? Yeah. That's what he's saying. Because yeah. you go to John seventeen three, but yeah. I'm saying John seventeen three is John. But even Jesus within those verses, which implica if you Im if you imply divinity upon any verse you want to bring up, so you brought up earlier John eight fifty eight. I gave you an explanation of what that actually means. Then other verses, I gave I gave you an example John ten thirty. It's misunderstood according to the context. You understand? So even when you make a reference to implicatory verses, which may suggest Christ's divinity, however, when you read the context within those verses, it will tell you to the contrary. So I gave you an example of as such in, in John 8.58 and in John 10.30 like as an example. If your dad, is, I don't know your dad, if your dad explained to you who he is and where he comes from, who am I to tell him that he doesn't come from here? <laughs> it's, it's, it's simple. Exactly, yes. Who are you, even his son? Because you come from him. You can't tell him what he has to tell you. He knows where you come from. So this is the difference. It's not that we're trying to pick because forget about him, forget about him. I was born as a Christian. But these questions, this, I came to this conclusion before I became a Muslim. I only became a Muslim four years ago. But I told you from 1969, this was questions I had that no one could answer. Oh, you ask so much question, or it's a mystery. But it can't be a mystery because my salvation depends on it. If you give me something, if you give a child or you have an exam that's too hard for him, you're not being fair for him, he can say, well, it's too hard for you. So God in his wisdom, he knows our limitations and our strength, and he will give us according to what we can bear, no more. So there is truth in the Bible, but the Bible, as he told you, Jeremiah 8.8, 8, you can go on and check it, it tells you because in the Bible, God gave the rabbis and the priests the responsibility to look after it and preserve it, but they didn't. Because they want to do things to change for their own. This is human nature. But the difference with the Quran, Allah has promised that He will preserve it. The question is why? Because this is the last of all revelation. There is no revelation coming after, no other prophet after Muhammad Salah. Because the Quran is not Muhammad speaking, it's not any of the prophets, this is God speaking. So God knows everything. It's very simple. My suggestion is I said, we're not here. One thing we don't do is try to force. We share, we convey the message, you reflect on it. And you have the right to, because your belief is your belief. We're not here to take that. My suggestion to you, take the Quran, read it for yourself. If you want to read about Hindu, because what happened with Christianity, I fell away from it, but I believed in it. But because I was into martial arts, I studied Zen Buddhism and stuff. But I like it, but there was something missing. You see, because funny enough, I'm the only Muslim in my family. My wife is Christian, my children, they're still Christian. They're still Christian. So it's not like I have to force, because we're all accountable, because God's given us a mind and given us a choice. We can either accept or reject. But I tell you this, when you stand in front of him, he's going to say to you that he knows already, if not the message comes to you. If the message comes to you and you didn't accept hellfire, if the message is you're in Amazon and you, you didn't hear the message, 
on that day you will have an individual test depending on your capacity before you go to Jannah, heaven because even a Christian if you don't believe in Jesus and his resurrection you're going to hell according to Christians but that's not what he taught himself he didn't come for that purpose to die for the sins of mankind his whole purpose is summarized there beautifully in John 17, 3. It's an ex excellent summary. For this is eternal life. Meaning, obviously, we don't have eternal life here on earth, but to recognize how to achieve the hereafter. For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God, and whom you have sent the messenger, Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful encapsulation of who Christ was and who Almighty God is. As far as we're God the Father is the only true God. In Arabic, the word is Allah. In Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke is Allaha. Allah, Allaha. In Hebrew, it's Ilah. In Hebrew, it's Ilah. It's the Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew, they are sister language. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know your stuff. But they're Semitic languages to each other. No. No man uh, knows I'm, enough. You know there. more. Okay. How old are you? Twenty years old. You're twenty oh, years old. 20 years. You know well, more. You're younger than my son. <laughs> than what I knew when I was in my fifties. Because only because I came to Islam and I started to research more. Because I abandoned Christianity. I knew what was right and not to commit sin and that kind yeah. of stuff. But the way you articulate yourself with the gentleman. Yeah. I wasn't able to do that. <laughs> no, no, but you're trying. But what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to big you up, but the facts is the facts. The truth is the truth. So you've got a way to go, but it's a journey. Even if you become a Muslim, it's not, oh, you, 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 you stop. You want to go into that shop, you have to look, you have to search. When you take the Shahada, you become a Muslim. The first thing, before you do anything, you have to seek your knowledge out of prayer you don't just follow him you have to seek the knowledge because you're accountable you have to know why you pray why you say these words why you do such so why you do all this kind of stuff he just did something very interesting he did something called a suju uh, uh, bowing we pray five times a day you know that don't you of course bowing and prostrating for that's something which is tantamount also to revelation from the old and new testament as well that's exactly how the prophets prayed there's a verse you know a very good verse i'm sure you're aware of it it's in nehemiah chapter 8 verse 4 and 6. it tells us the actual methodology of how to perform prayer bowing to god first kneeling in prostration which is the exact way the muslims pray did you know in, in the old testament in deuteronomy before moses would offer congregational prayers he would wash his hands and, and finish by washing his feet before he would offer congregational prayers, standing shoulder to shoulder, praying to the Almighty. Zephaniah 3.9, standing shoulder to shoulder, praying to the Almighty God. So what we're seeing, Islam, Islam means submission to the will of God. Submission to the will of the Almighty One True God, who is the creator of everyone. We have got pressure, look, the, the message of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, they're there at the bottom. What was that message? All the same. Worship the Almighty God alone and submit your will to Him. We then say inadvertently that all the prophets, including Jesus, were Muslims. And people will say, oh, how's that possible? He came from the lineage of, the, uh, of, uh, of Israel. But the fact is that he submitted his will to Almighty God. And Islamically speaking, that is the definition of a Muslim. He actually uses the term Muslim in Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The term Muslim is used in Hebrew. To describe, shalom. yeah, shalom, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah the, the root cognate words are correct. Said something yeah. very interesting. He said the lineage of Jesus. The lineage of Jesus comes from who? But Jesus, no, no, no. You, you're right, but Jesus had no father. Yeah, I know. You understand? Yeah, I know. So, right. So, but at the same juncture, let's say something else. Very positive. The Quran says the following: the strongest in enmity to the believers. I mean, the ones who hate you most will you find the jews and the pagans but the nearest to you in love will you find those who say we are christian christians amongst them there are people who are devoted to learning their truth there are priests and monks and they are not arrogant so the almighty god in the quran speaking about people of another religion of faith the christians they are not arrogant when the truth is presented, they accept it. So, yeah, you hear us. So we're not here to lambast your faith. 
rather for you to understand what was the true message of the historical Jesus Christ who lived on the earth 2000 years ago and that was what we spoke of. That is not Fantastic question, straightforward response. The Quranic narrative is that the similitude or the example of Adam, sorry, of Jesus, is like of Adam. Well, Jesus was born without the conduit of a father. Adam was born from dust, neither mother or father. It's a miracle bestowed by God to mankind in the form of his select chosen people. He does it as he will. In the book of Genesis, in reference to the glad tidings that the angel gives to Abraham that your elderly barren wife is going to give birth. He exclaims, for how can my wife give birth when she is old and barren? In the book of, it says in Genesis, when God simply will something, he says, be and it is. This is the symbol to give it in the Quran. When God simply will something, i.e. the birth of Jesus by miraculous means, he simply will something and it says, be and it is, kun fayakun. So it's a miracle bestowed, yes, upon a select chosen servant of Jesus, of being Jesus Christ, a great and mighty and noble messenger of the almighty God. So Jesus then is born, he's created, that means he has an existence, he's come into existence. This is not applicable to God, because God never comes into existence. Precisely. He's always there. So yeah. With that though, obviously you guys, you guys probably know this, but Elohim is a plural word. Plural no. word. Wait, 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 wait. It's Moses. Moses is referred to as Elohim. Is there more than one Moses? No, Moses, Moses here, Let him finish his point. Yeah, go on. What's the aim? Yeah. Just give him the chapter. Yeah, it's in, it's in uh, Exodus chapter 3. Yes, you refer to as Elohim. So chapter 7 verse 1. That's what I'm saying. Most Christians, they don't read the Bible. You see, when we read the Quran, we don't pick and choose. We have to read it from the beginning to end. It's like what I say to my wife. Where should have oh, because my desire. As Muslims, we don't have our desire. We simply hear and obey. Whatever God tells us to do, we will do it. Why does it say, let us speak and in our way? The brother, the brother yeah. will explain. So that's in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. So man there, as you're aware, is Adam. So God gives some of his attributes to mankind. It's not literally, I mean, for example, I think it says in Ephesians chapter 2, that Christians are also made in the image of God. But obviously this does not make them all gods, does it? So God gives some of his attributes. Not that he's a, the physical manifestation of an invisible being can be procreated in the form of a limited being. I think so, in that when God says, let mess, let so what are you referring to? So he's refer more than one God you're talking about. But Jesus is there somewhere. That's what he's talking about. When Jesus, when God says, let us. Oh, the us bit. The us, is, yeah. again, it goes to the language. This brother, Mustafa, will explain. Yeah, there's two different versions. One thing is no historical source has ever said that it's in reference to uh, Jesus himself. Rather, the us is uh, understood in two or three different ways. According to the Jews, the us is like God is sitting in his royal court. And the other su subjects of God, like the angels and so forth, God is giving commands to them as the head of the, within the council. And he's saying, let us make man. Not that, for example, when the queen, or when she's now deceased, but the king makes a statement in, or in, in the royal courts, where, what does he say? And we have done such and such. But it's, but, but it's only one person, if you see what I mean. There's a form of plural way of speaking in terms of respect. It's just in that context. But us, in this context, two understandings in Christendom, it's never been taken to being Jesus was that part of that uh, Trinity understanding. Rather, it's simply saying that either he was in the court of, of God, where the angels preside and do the works, or the second nominal understanding is it's a royal we. It's a royal exclamation. But it's never there because Jesus is not mentioned in that particular passage. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1, 2 and 3, it says that, that God spoke to us in the olden times. I'm just paraphrasing. Um, um, uh, through the prophets. Today he speaks through Jesus Christ, his son. So if that shows to us that Jesus was not existing at that time because now he's only existed at the time that he's come to the earth. So we see the limitation of Christ. We know relentlessly when he says, of my own free will I can do nothing. I'm going to go deep again. Oh, fair enough. There's a, there's a few verses here. 
but I'm not going to make a full year ever because I still believe Jesus Christ that my sins are at the same day. At the same time. What am I even going to No, you, you have a right. Your, your belief. Your belief is your belief. Yeah. If you believe Jesus died for you, but as Muslim, we will say to you, where's the evidence? Because your wait, evidence has to wait. come from the Bible. Jesus did say many will come to me. Will come to me, not to, not to hurry down the road or go. He said many will come we to me in that day. Let him finish it. Go. I was saying, did we not, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? And he would say, depart from me, for I never knew you. I know what I was talking about. Matthew chapter 7. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but it's Luke, I think. It's better, it's, it's and also in Luke. Luke. It's Luke. It's, Luke. it's, it's Luke. also in Matthew. Is, yeah. Who do you think Jesus is talking to? Hang on. Who do you think Jesus is referring to? referring to? Yeah, in that passage. In that passage. When he says, go go away from me, I don't know you. Who is he referring to? Who, who prophesies? You know what he's saying to you? What he's saying to you, my brother, is saying, Abdullah is saying that the people... Sorry, what's your record? Sorry, brother. <laughs> my, 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 my mind slipped. Uh, Sam, 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 thank you, brother. Yeah. So, basically speaking, what he's saying is that those who will come at the end times and run up, run up to Jesus and say to him, Master, Master, we used to cast out many demons in your name. Christ will say to them, Away from me, you who work iniquity. For you claim for me that I did not claim. And what do we see today? When you go onto the God channel, for example, on Sky, what do they do? In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Wake up, get up. Only and Christians. Then, uh, you, to Christians. You know, you see this today, don't you, on these satellite channels. So they say, in the name of Jesus Christ, awaken and do this and do that. So it's to those people that they will run to Jesus when they see him. And we used to do many works in your name. Christ will say to them, Holy Christian, Yeah, and I, I, I never mentioned the verse before, but when he says, Not those who call me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the ones who call upon to God, you see. Father. And then he furthers the Father, and then he says in verse twenty-one to twenty-three that the ones who um, the ones who then uh, call you know in mind uh, when they say we used to cast out demons in your name, these are the people who got Christ will say away from me, you who work lawlessness or work iniquity, you claim for me that I did not claim, meaning you made me to be akin to the, our Creator, I did not make that claim. You will go away from me. That is what it's made reference to. You know what would be nice if you bring up that verse, so he can actually see it for himself. I know. I'm sure he knows it. You know that. You know that one, don't you? Which difference I'm... when you know something and you see. It Let me bring it up. Okay, fair enough. Read it, fair who enough. is talking to the Christians? Because they're doing the work of him instead of doing the work of the Father. Jesus is the way to God. He's not the destination. True. At the time of Jesus, the only way to go to God was through Jesus. At the time of Moses, the only time to get to God was through Moses. Because don't forget, what did Jesus tell his disciples? Jesus, what did Jesus tell you? The disciples to go and baptize. That's what Jesus is word. That's what I'm saying. Go to the way in Jesus' word and go to where God is speaking. Not where Paul, John, Matthew, Mark. Those are second third. We don't even know who they are. But you know Jesus. Yeah, so, so, so I'm, I'm on the camera at the moment. I'll speak to you. I'll call you back in a few moments. Yeah? Uh -huh. Hello? It's why I can't speak now. I'm, I'm, I'm appearing live on camera. It doesn't say Jesus. It says the Father. Everything Jesus Hallowed be thy name. Thy yes. kingdom kind. Thy God. will be done. Not my will. Your will be done. The greatest commandment according to Jesus is fear of Israel, your Lord is one. That's Which brother is going to Salah? It's your time, brother. It's 7 o'clock, actually, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we got... What's the time now? 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. Read it and break it down. And it says there, it's, 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 is it better this way? No. Oh. Very clear. Very clear. Not everyone is. So, this everyone is mostly Jesus. It's mostly Christian that do the work in Jesus' name. Not Muslim, not Jews, or anybody else. So, when you look at that, it's not referring to us, it's referring to you guys. 
Because everybody's Jesus, Jesus this, Jesus that. Jesus so basically, that. You, I think you can catch the scenario. Yeah. When he returns, people who do many works and his, miracles in his name, he will be having a go at them. You've claimed, because what they will say from the beginning, not anyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of God. Go on, go on. He says not everyone. Yeah. Yes. Not anyone, not everyone. Two different yeah, but that's fine. But either way, either way, the point still remains. But no, yes, he says not everyone. What do, not we. What do you understand by this? Not everyone. It's saying not everyone. Exactly. Not everyone who says to me, "Lord, Lord, 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 not everyone in plan. There will be people that say that. Yeah. There will be people that say, yeah. And this is for only the one who did. He does. The will of my heart. Yeah. 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 Not everyone who says to me, yeah. as Jesus yeah. Yeah. Yes. Not yeah. everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so there you have it. So it's only to reference to one who recognizes God, God as doing the will of God, you see. So it's confirmed it there by the Father. Yes, precisely. If he didn't mention the Father, just like in John, when it says to Mary Magdalene, if he had stopped, don't touch me because I've not yet ascended to my father and your, your father. father my God. Yes. But he continued to say, my God and your God. So again, Christian says, oh, we cherry pick. But we didn't come from That's why I said, if it's there in black and white, if we make a mistake, you can see it. Yes, I need oh, to. I need oh, to go. Sorry, yeah. The, the, Just like yeah, my, my So what have we got to wrap? I mean, we've got to wrap. I hope you don't mind. What would I like you to do? So I never said, what's your name? Favor. Pardon? Saver. 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 We've got lots of literature on the table. Oh, you got, yeah. You want to take over? No, no, no. Oh. He, he, go, no, no he, he needs to go to the upper salah. Yeah. But we need to go to our prayers. So, so, yeah. so we don't want to miss our prayers. When, we, when it comes to our prayer, we don't joke. Yeah. We but, need the food to go and pray. But Saver, please come by. We're here every, um, every Saturday. Saturday so we should be here Monday. We, we should be here Monday. So please come. You're very welcome to. If you want any further questions, please do so. Tonight we're doing a stream at 9 p.m. On, we're discussing is Jesus God. It's at 9 p.m. tonight on a channel called Cove C O V F F Freddy Freddy C O V F F tonight 9 p.m. We will do, anyone is welcome to come on, express their sentiment. You'll be treated with respect, even if you hold an opposing view as well. Because it gives you a different perspective watching it on the video. We have delighted speaking to you. Thank watch. you so much. Yeah, it was nice. Like, it was a lot of, I've seen a lot of debates whether that's. Goes out of hand, yes. So why are we rushing? It's, that's six, it's only 6 30. It's 6 37, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so before I say 10 2. Oh. You conducted yourself very well, brother. Honestly. Sorry, so, you know, we've just been actually mistaken. Sprint. Somebody said it was 10 to 7, but it's only 6 37. So, sorry, we've been misinformed. We still go okay, okay, no, we don't want to keep you in that case, okay? Do you have a read? Yeah. And we'll see you soon. Okay, God bless you. Take care. When is your issue? So, a, a nice conclusion here with our very uh, pleasant friend, Saver Christian. We spoke to him about the usual things in reference to who Jesus was. I think he, it was resonated with him, but because he's a new Christian learning a few things, you know, he still wants to investigate further, which is his right. May Allah guide him. He's got some information and literature, and he's welcome to come back to our table. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.